A rotating crew of wanderers on a 50-foot sailboat, rite of passage. This is our story. I moved on to this boat to live sustainably and to stop hurting things and to, you know, get out there in nature and be part of nature and part of nature, I guess, is having to kill things. A little bit of water dripped in to our freezer and our fridge while we were gone. And there's a bunch of mosquito larvae. What are you guys doing? You can't live in our fridge? <laughs> Actually, maybe part of me being in nature is just letting a man to kill things. <laughs> I feel are you terrible. bleaching those poor little baby <laughs> mosquitoes? I am. I'm sorry. Death to you all. <laughs> what an evil, evil woman. Working on Amanda. Anyone who's tried to re-glue a gasket on a port light can tell you it's a major pain in the butt. What are you working on, Jensen? Filming you. <sighs> what you thinking? I'm thinking that this motor is grimy and dirty. The previous owner did a great job of keeping the boat in tip-top shape while they were using it but it's been sitting for a couple of years. There are a few repairs made out at sea that did the trick to keep the boat going for sure. However, while we had the time and we're on the hard for hurricane season, we decided to fix them properly. Like this muffler that was being held together with aluminum foil. <laughs> I think that's aluminum foil, isn't it? I think so. Can't tell. Are you excited to clean it? I am excited to clean it. I started a little bit earlier. I took a screwdriver and was doing a little bit of paint removal. But I realized I probably better get the vacuum so that those paint chips don't go down into the bilge. Wow, you're smart. <laughs> so smart. Keeping stuff out of the bilge. I mean, it looks really, really rusty. But I feel like no shit it's rusty. It's on a boat. And it's just been sitting for a little bit. And... I think if we just scrape it and clean it a little bit and put some new paint on it, it's going to be fine. The seals look really good. There's no like major corrosion. Even the belts aren't in that bad of shape. Oh, it just on. <laughs> Well, I mean, there's some major corrosion on a couple of the things that aren't painted. Like this alternator mount definitely has some corrosion on it. But just we can pull that off and clean it. Watch out. <laughs> I can find a shed. Okay. Okie dokie. Or the Well, not, I mean, if that stuff's already sealed, you could probably leave it. So leave it? Yeah. But you Do just the ones said that yes. aren't sealed. Well, I thought you meant like the windows that aren't sealed. I asked you this one specifically. <laughs> well. Listen, motherfucker, get your shit together. No, <laughs> oh, I <don't> know. <laughs> just kidding. When you start to fully embrace your OCD, Tool room organization. You playing on your phone? No. Hey y'all, we're down here in Port St. Lucie and we've been running around getting stuff all day for the new sewing machine so we can make bimini covers and bug screens and curtains and all kinds of stuff. So we're gonna learn to sew. Maybe. Oh wow, you bent the needle? <laughs> okay. Apparently, sail material is stronger than I thought. The big test. Ah, uh, how do you go straight? <laughs> is it working? Oh, I know. I'm an idiot. What'd you do? <laughs> I'm an idiot. Oh shit, we're sewing sails. <laughs> Needs to be wider though. That's a wider thing. Oh, that's wider. That's better. That looks nice. Oh man, Amanda, you're pretty good at <laughs> sewing. <laughs> but but you got but Oh, yeah. Did you just go backwards a little bit? <laughs> Amanda likes to make fun of me because of my LaCroix addiction, but <laughs> looks like we all have our substance abuse problems, don't we? I'm not addicted. Mm -hmm. I'll give it to you though. I would totally buy this coffee just for the looks of it. It's a pretty good design. Mm. Just a little bit of water damage. Oh, 
Got that one all painted up nicely. Is it peeling at all? Mm, no. Oh, there's some paint on that one though. Oh, well, that's a cute little taco. <laughs> My first impressions with sewing is this. Um, doing it outside in Florida when it's this hot is not very smart. But beggars can't be choosy. Second is that it's not really as hard as it looks just to like lay down straight lines but when the machine breaks and when everything gets all tied up and tangled up it's kind of confusing and Amanda's sleeping and I need an adult because this is hard. Some advice to anyone out there who's thinking about getting a sewing machine and working on their own canvas on the boat is get the cheaper machine. It's working fine. It was $300 versus $800. And if it gets ruined in a couple years and falls overboard, oh well. Also, I'm really glad that I started with the cheaper thread. It's still UV rated and outdoor instead of the stuff that's like really, really expensive and will last forever because my sewing job isn't that good and I'm sure I'm going to have to redo it. Going through our Dodger and our Bimini and doubling up all these seams. Uh, that's the thing that goes over the wheels, the Bimini and the Dodger is kind of like the windshield thing. But I'm doubling up the seams on the outside so that way the wind doesn't rip them apart. We'll see if it works. I don't think it's supposed to look like that. This is the Bimini, the thing I fixed earlier. And this is the Dodger that I was also working on, but when we put it up, realized some of those zippers are broke. So, at the Marine Liquidator store, they have this used bulk bin of canvas, and they've got all kinds of parts on there, including zippers. So you can buy like this used canvas for super, super cheap and reduce, reuse, recycle them damn zippers. You just gotta like rip it apart with this little devil's tool. So it kinda takes a while to re recycle a zipper. But when you've got all the time in the world and you live on a sailboat, are you in jail? You're stuck. <laughs> <laughs> you stuck? We are here at Rora Beck's Produce. We just picked up the sailboat arch and we drove by and we're like, holy cow, it looks like an awesome market. And this is the place we've been looking for. Unfortunately, it's kind of far from our boat, so we won't be coming here again, most likely. But it's awesome. It's super, super cheap. And, yeah, really great selection. And it reminds me of, like, an island produce stand. And it's in the middle of Florida, which is pretty cool. This place would be my open harvest if I was closer. Man. What? I want to buy it. It's by the bunch. I can eat it right now. Why? It's good for my liver. I'm trying to detox. Oh, uh -huh. shared a bottle of wine last night, so. This place was awesome. It was super cheap, tons and tons of variety, and it had all kinds of weird fruit that I had no idea what it was. And coconut milk. Coconut milk? Finding places like this is really important to us while we're traveling. We like to stay as healthy as we can so we can stay out of hospitals, personally. I find that my body is way easier adapted to long, energy-intensive days when I eat from scratch and avoid processed foods. I'm well aware that we might have a difficult time finding places like this as we travel around the world, but we will always be on the lookout for fresh local foods on Rite of Passage, that's for sure. Are you having trouble getting that on there? I'm not Are you sure? Why do you have a mini fridge anyway? Because we have a keel cooler. Evidently, if you have a keel cooler, on your refrigerator on the boat, then it cools off in the ocean, right? Because it's keel cooled, water cooled. Being on the land is not good for it. So Amanda says. That's what I know. <laughs> so rather than having to replace the fridge on here that would be really expensive, we just got a little cheap dorm fridge that we're gonna take back when we're done using. Also, how cute is Michael? Oh my God, look at him. 
<laughs> He's so cute. <laughs> I miss him. Hi, Michael. Hi, Michael. <laughs> what are you making? Bacon bananas. Bacon bananas. <laughs> <laughs> Our water isn't working this morning and it's very frustrating. The bathroom sinks, faucet's on. It's kind of a blessing in disguise that we're dealing with these problems now on the hard when we have plenty of time to fix them. But that doesn't make it any less frustrating when all you're trying to do is take a shower and do the dang dishes. Another day on the sailboat, another thing that breaks. Um, that's just part of being on boats, and there's no avoiding it. No matter how much money you have, how new your boat is, how old your boat is, whether it's a power boat or a sailboat, shit's gonna break. Um, last night before we went to bed, our water wasn't working, so we couldn't do dishes, and that's the reason why we have so many dishes on the counter. Not because we're lazy. Um, and so we are like, we'll just fix it when we wake up, we'll fill the tanks. Well, we went to fill the tanks, and water started gushing into our bilge. And our boat has built-in tanks, which means that instead of being in a bladder or being on a secondary tank somewhere underneath a settee or something, there's this giant built-in tank right here that's fiberglass, which is awesome. Except that this is a 1980 boat and you know it crashes in the waves all day long. And so those eventually could crack. Thankfully this one isn't cracked, we thought it was at first, but we realized that the filler valve, the hose that leads down from the fore of the boat down to here, is just old and it cracked and it was leaking water and that's why water was going into the bilge and not into our tanks. Luckily we have a secondary filler valve up here underneath the uh, cockpit, so we filled that up and now our tank is filling, but we still didn't have water. So we did a little troubleshooting on the fuel pump, or pfft, not the fuel pump, the water pump, and prime the line, and now we have water, so we can finally do dishes and shower, and it's been a long 12 hours without water. <laughs> There's our new dinghy, and that's the davits that hold it on to the boat. Yes, it works, and it lifts up onto the boat like it's supposed to do, but in following seas and big waves crashing over the back, that thing is going to get ripped off so quick. So we're taking it off. We are going to custom fabricate an arch. Well, we're going to modify an arch off of a speedboat to make it work on this. And it's going to be sweet. We are on our way down to Port St. Lucie to pick up an arch. And getting it on top of the van is going to be a little bit tricky. This is going to hold the boat up. And we'll put lots of solar on that shit. <laughs> What do you need? Sushi. What you making? Sushi. Sushi. Boat sushi. I believe that a major part of health and happiness comes from food. Soon, we will be living off of the funds from random jobs that we find here and there in the islands. We're not going to have a steady source of income, so eating out won't really be an option. Luckily, we plan to stock our boat with loads of books, musical instruments, and all the kitchen supplies we would need to create fantastic, healthy meals at home. And by home, I mean the boat. Good morning, y'all. I had three beers and I'm hangover. And, uh, it's sewing, sewing, sewing. I'm editing video. We're gonna have some new videos coming up. I miss Michael. I miss you, What are you making, Amanda? For what? I know, but which room? Ooh. Do you feel like you're more at a sweatshop than a sailboat sometimes? Will the curtains ever end? No. Do you even have any hung up yet? No. What? He's gonna fit in here with that one in here.
take that one back and sell it in Nebraska because we just don't have enough room in here. We decided to get this storage unit um, to store everything during hurricane season so that way if something does happen to the boat, less stuff gets damaged or if water gets in there. Also while we're working on it, it was just kind of a pain in the ass to have these big sails in there and because we don't want to keep them on the boat right now. If they should some reason come undone in the middle of the hurricane, they would just rip to shreds. So they're in here, it's not very expensive, and we figured while we have this storage unit, we're just gonna put as much stuff in here as possible, so. Well, I'm an idiot. This harness was stuck, so I pulled on it, and while I pulled on it, I inflated it. It scared the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> we should just leave it and see how long it stays inflated. Tohatsu! It's amazing how much shit goes on up there. Look on the ocean. It was a 22 foot cow. And I think if I would have put this much stuff in there, I would have sunk it. So this is oil leaking from our outboard motor. Um, it seems like possibly we may have lost the screw on the bottom, which is kind of alarming. <laughs> I mean, there's water in the oil and also not much oil in the motor in general, so something to look into, I suppose. Getting better? What do you mean by getting better? Like it's less coming out? No. What? <laughs> nope. We are deflating the dinghy because it's ten and a half feet and our storage unit is ten feet. Smart. Check it out. Push them in and turn them. It's a really good question. Do you smell it? No. Maybe it's just me and I'm hungry. The dinghy is stored. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed our last episode. Uh, there's a lot of work to do on the boat, but we're slowly making progress and really happy about that. Michael, Amanda, and myself are back here in beautiful Emerald, Nebraska, which is just outside of Lincoln, Nebraska. And we've got a couple weeks left before we move down onto the boat for good. And in the meantime, we're just going to be getting rid of all of our stuff. And we hope to splash the boat November 1st. So look for a couple more videos of us getting the boat ready and perhaps a video of life here at the farm. So thanks again for watching and we appreciate everyone who is supporting us on Patreon so far. And if you don't know what that is, check out our website. It's a great way to help us while we're out on the ocean and to buy us a beer and to buy us a little bit of food so we can keep going and keep making videos. Even a couple dollars per episode goes a long way. If you'd like to pledge more than that, we've got some pretty cool rewards, including spending time on the boat, stickers, t-shirts, all kinds of stuff. So if you have a couple extra minutes, go check out the website. Thanks, guys.